The copper canister in this problem has a mass that we're given and is filled with a mass of water and some ice, all of which is at the common temperature of zero degrees Celsius. And then a piece of lead is added. The lead's initial temperature is 255 degrees Celsius and we're asked to find the common final temperature when everything is in equilibrium. Two of the possible outcomes are listed here. One is a partial melt. There's a certain amount of energy available from the lead that can go into melting the ice and then raising the temperature of the whole system. If the energy that's available from the lead is less than what's required to melt the ice, the entire system will be in equilibrium at zero degrees Celsius as only part of the ice is melted. If there's more than enough energy to melt all the ice, we have the case of a full melt, and any excess energy will go into raising the system's temperature. The energy available to melt the ice comes from the lead, so that's mc delta t, where the temperature change is from the lead's initial temperature down to zero degrees Celsius. We can look up the specific heat for lead and calculate this to see it's 24.9 times 10 to the third joules. The energy required to melt all the ice is the ice's mass times water's latent heat of fusion. Those numbers are shown here and it works out to 6.01 times 10 to the third joules. There's more than enough energy available to melt the ice, so we're in the case of a full melt. Let me erase this now so we can solve the calorimetry problem. By conservation of energy, we know that the sum of all the energy transfers equals zero. And in the case of a full melt, there are four energy transfers that we need to add up. The first one changes the temperature of the copper canister. So we have mc delta t for the copper. The second one changes the temperature for the lead. We have mc delta t for the lead. Then we have an energy transfer that melts all of the ice. And finally, we have an energy transfer that changes the temperature of all the water. That's the original water's mass plus the mass of the ice that's been melted. So we have mc delta t for that. And these all sum to zero. The temperature changes are listed here. For the copper, final temperature minus initial temperature. For the lead, final minus the lead's initial temperature where T sub L is 255 degrees Celsius, and for the water, final minus the initial temperature of zero Celsius. From this equation, we can factor out the common final temperature. To obtain this expression, that we can solve for T sub F, the final temperature. That gives us this result. which we can substitute all the known values into. We know all the masses, and we can look up the specific heats and the latent heat of fusion. The specific heat for lead is 130 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. The latent heat of fusion for water is 334 times 10 to the third joules per kilogram. Copper's specific heat is 390 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And water specific heat is 4190 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Calculating the final value then gives us an equilibrium temperature of 21.4 degrees Celsius.